In a story for The Washington Post attempting to smear and defame YouTubers, Taylor Lorenz is being called out for lying. What we are seeing here, my friends, is the implosion of corporate press. And boy, is it glorious. Well, maybe it's not the implosion, but the degradation of corporate press into stupid drama channels. But that's the name of the game, I suppose. The story goes quite simply that after the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial, Taylor Lorenz decided to write about radicalized influencers, claiming that she contacted particular individuals for comment who then came out and said, no, she didn't. They then had to stealth edit the piece, which means they went in and changed the article without saying anything. A huge violation of journalistic standards. They apparently had to make two changes and still are accused of lying in their final interpretation. Taylor Lorenz came out and said, it wasn't me. It, it was the editor who put that in there. I didn't put it in there. Sure, whatever. The outlets are exploding. There are or imploding is the better way to put it. We also have another story about the Washington Post where apparently one of their writers retweeted a joke that was deemed sexist and now the whole room is going crazy. It's fun to watch. But you know what? I normally don't care for I, I don't care for drama, but there's something more important here. You know, whenever there's like a drama story, I come out and I'm like, I don't like drama. But there is something more important here outside of the normal drama. And that is a common tactic used by corporate press is no longer working. I'll tell you what they do and why this one makes me happy. You see, these news outlets, they will find an old email, some garbage contact form, or they'll tweet at you from a garbage account. And they'll say something like, what are your thoughts on X? And you won't see the notification on Twitter, or you won't see the email that, that goes directly to spam. And then they'll write either did not reply, didn't respond, failed to, to provide a comment when, when asked to make it seem like you are choosing not to participate in the narrative. In reality, they know that they can do the bare minimum to make it true. We, we tried to contact them. It's happened to me. I've had people email an account, like an email account I had from like 20 years ago or something. And they were like, we reached out for comment and you didn't respond. And I'm like, I, I have a website with my email address on it. And they didn't contact me there. It's a lie. It's a manipulation because they are trying to just smear you. Now, here's where here's another big element of this. They have been for years trying to claim that we are all radicalized, that by simply having an opinion, you're radicalized. So when it comes to Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, the narrative that they were trying to swing was that people who sided with Johnny Depp were radicalized because they saw that it made them money. Never mind the fact that these people covering the case one, I, I believe, is a, is a lawyer who covers cases. And the other person had been talking about the case for a year. Taylor Lorenz is trying to claim, basically, that the only reason people talked about this was because there was money to be made. Look in the mirror, Taylor Lorenz. You are a liar and, dare I say, an, an unwell individual who has imploded on the public stage. And I am, sh I am shocked the Washington Post has not yet fired her. But let me walk you through the story. Starting with the National Review, Taylor Lorenz has responded to the accusations, only making things worse. But more importantly, I want to show you a thread from Glenn Greenwald where he talks about this sexist joke because the Washington Post newsroom is just on fire. These people are losing it. They're publicly fighting with each other. And these employees who are like, please stop doing this, they get blocked and then they get pulled into the fight. It's like, remember when the Tasmanian devil in Looney Tunes would start spinning and then someone would get pulled into it and then or, 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 you, there would be like a fight and then people would get pulled into it ah, and it's all crazy. That's what's happening. But it is fun to watch WAPO implode. From the National Review, YouTubers claim Washington Post's Taylor Lorenz lied about requesting comment for hit piece. Now, this is not the latest story. We have a development from June 4th. Washington Post issues two corrections to Taylor Lorenz's article that had already been stealth edited. Amazing. Stealth editing is some of the dirtiest, dirtiest maneuver, maneuvering that these news organizations do. Let me go back in time and tell you a story. I worked for Fusion, and I remember an article was, uh, was, was written by the New York Times. The New York Times was talking about CEO Ellen Powell. And I believe the story at the time was that she was stepping down as CEO. 
The story that was published was very basic. It said Alan Powell resigns as CEO, something like that. Or I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was some story there. Just flat news. I saw the story and then the next day the story changed. It became an op ed about feminism in Silicon Valley. And it was titled like Big Tech Bros 2, you know, uh, Silicon, you know, or like Feminist Zero or something like that. And I was like, well, this is an op ed now. That's weird. The reason that's wrong. If you shared that story with your friends as a fact news piece, the next day when they click it, they get some feminist opinion piece and might think that's your opinion you're sharing or just ask you why you shared it. Furthermore, it violated the rules of Reddit and other big social media platforms. Notably on Reddit, you can't post a link to a story uh, in the news subreddit with a different headline to the news itself. You have to use because they don't want people doing propaganda and manipulation and things like that. I don't know if that's still the case. So I reached out for comment to the, the moderator saying, what is your policy on when a news organization changes their article without, without uh, notifying anybody or without a correction? They immediately deleted what was, I believe, the third and fifth most upvoted story on Reddit in Reddit history, meaning just very prominent posts. It was a huge violation. When I told this, when I, when I mentioned this in the newsroom at Fusion, this is a big story. It's a major violation of ethics, and it's having a huge impact on digital and internet culture. I was told, we do the same thing, so just don't say anything. And then I was like, we change articles without notifying our readers? And they're like, yes, all the time, in fact. Wow. I am very strict at TimCast.com. I was like, any change has to have a note as to what that change is. I wouldn't mind having a log where you can click it and see all the revisions as well. Here's the story. The piece, which had been secretly edited after it was published on Thursday, detailed how content creators made out big in the sensational Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation lawsuit. Two YouTubers, Legal Bites host Elite Mazika, I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I'm sorry, Mazika, and an anonymous user named That Umbrella Guy were singled out in the article. Loren, citing Business Insider, claimed Mazeka earned $5,000 in one week by pivoting the content on her YouTube channel to nonstop trial coverage and analysis. That umbrella guy earned up to $80,000 last month, according to an estimate by social analytics firm Social Blade, Lorenz wrote, adding that neither YouTuber responded for requ- to request for comment. I want to pause and just say Social Blade is wrong. Social Blade is, is absolutely wrong. Not only do they give wild financial estimates as to what the amount of money you're making, it's just not correct. There's no way for them to actually know. But they use this to try and make it seem like you're making more or less than you really are. Anyway, there's a picture of Lorenz. They say Mazeka and, the, and that umbrella guy claimed Lorenz never reached out to them prior to publication for the story, Fox News reported. Lorenz also made a second error wrongly attributing a statement to Depp's rep, Adam Waldman. Although a note at the bottom of the article acknowledged her story was updated to clarify comments made during Walden's testimony, Waldman's, the claim that Lorenz had reached out to the YouTubers for comment was deleted without any acknowledgement. After Fox News Post published the story about the stealth edit, the Washington Post issued a correction at the bottom of Lorenz's report, saying a previous version of the story inaccurately attributed to Adam Waldman a quote describing how he contacted some internet influencers. The quote was removed. The story also um, has been amended to note the Post's attempt to reach a light mazeka and that umbrella guy for comment, previous versions omitted or inaccurately described these attempts. Oh, I love this one. Let me tell you a story. The New Yorker once wrote a story about me. In it, they included a false statement. The long story short of it was they made a fake quote up about me. I believe it was the New Yorker. They made up a fake quote from me. They said, Tim Pool said these things. And it was like one quote, but it was actually two different things pushed together. They later, when I said this is fake news and actually Vice complained as well because the quote was not real. I never said it. They said, we have removed a quote from Tim Pool because it was inaccurate or something like that, making it seem like I said something that was wrong. These people are garbage. They lie. And when I called them, they said, do something about it. I was pissed off. But what can you really do? Spend hundreds of thousands of dollars going up against them to try. Yeah, the problem was. The statement that my quote was inaccurate was a true statement. So I called some lawyers and they said, they're right. Well, now it seems like they're framing it in a way and you could probably go after them. But the reality is it was cleverly crafted by lawyers so that it could be true that they published an inaccurate statement, 
but that it makes it seem like it was my inaccurate statement. Pe- these people are nasty. That's why they're fake news. Hey, shout out to the, uh, was it WFAA.com or whatever. They called the drag event in Dallas a family friendly event. Yeah, that's just because the, the abusers were calling it that. They didn't, they didn't actually, that's, that's insane that they would do that. Let's take a look at the uh, latest development. First, why this is important. Who won the Depp Heard trial? Content creators that went all in. Influencers discover there's money and clout to be made in covering breaking news. It's celebrity gossip, dude. What do you think YouTube is if not just endless celebrity gossip? It is probably one of the top entertainment content stories, period. If you make content about the law like Legal Bites does, then you're going to cover a high profile trial. Taylor Lorenz is playing the stupid game again. Oliver Darcy, wow, of all people, said in a series of tweets, Lorenz blames her editor for having inserted the error into her story and says she is the victim of a bad faith campaign. Here we can see this thread from Taylor Lorenz, which I'll read. But I want to point this out. Lorenz responded to Oliver Darcy saying, no, actually, this type of coverage is so irresponsible and dangerous. It's misrepresenting my words to amplify a manufactured outrage campaign by right wing media and radicalized influencers, which is driving a vicious harassment smear campaign against me. CNN is gleefully piling on. Taylor, when YouTubers, regular people and CNN, corporate press, all point to you and say, you did wrong. You don't go, it's not me. It's the whole world that's harassing me. Amazing. Absolutely amazing that you could be standing there. Um, it's like the family guy joke where Peter's standing in an elevator with one other guy and he farts, looks at the guy and goes, it was you. Like the joke, no one believes you, dude. You're not being harassed when everyone is telling you you're the person harassing people. Here we go. Here's the thread that Lorenz posted. She said, last Thursday, an incorrect line was added to a story of mine before publishing due to a miscommunication with an editor. I did not write the line and was not aware it was inserted. I asked for it to be removed right after the story went live. The line was a sentence saying that I had reached out to two YouTubers for comment for my story. The inclusion of the YouTubers was only in passing, citing another outlet's reporting. After the story went live, I reached out to both YouTubers mentioned in the sentence just to be extra sure there wasn't some sort of commentary they wanted to add. Neither provided comment to the, for the story and both continued to post about me. Here's the funny thing. Apparently, that's not true either. Amazing. The mention of these two individuals was not remotely the focus of my story. It's become a huge distraction. I spoke to over two dozen creators for my story about this trial along with other experts who are quoted in the piece. This should have been a small correction for a miscommunication, but it turned into a multi-day media cycle intentionally aimed at discrediting the Washington Post and me. No, y'all have done that to yourselves. Blah, 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 blah. I know the stuff I write, write about and go through is a hugely unfamiliar to the vast majority of people in media. I have great hope that all of us can learn from the experience. Here's the point. Taylor Lorenz is calling these people radicalized influencers because they're talking about celebrity gossip. You've lost the plot, uh, Washington Post. You're going insane. Don't believe me? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the next big meltdown from the Washington Post. Oh, Bezos, what has your money bought you? Glenn Greenwald says, so typical. Washington Post reporter Felicia Sanmez is now on her third straight day of publicly bashing her own colleagues. She pressured the Post to publicly malign Dave Weigel as reprehensible, forced him to repeatedly apologize, now is attacking another Washington Post reporter for politely objecting. Amazing watching the implosion. Dave Weigel, I might add, writes fake news. He once wrote a fake story about Kim.com and Seth Rich, and it was laughably insane. He made some ridiculous arguments trying to make it seem like Kim.com had hacked some Gmail account or something like that, just or was was trying to. Fake news, Dave. And then they stealth edited the piece. None of these people are are worthy of any of our admiration or empathy. They are just bad people. But ladies and gentlemen, I give you the first tweet from Felicia Sanmez, who tweeted, fantastic to work at a news outlet where retweets like this are allowed. Here we go. Cam Harless tweeted, every girl is bi. You just have to figure out if it's polar or sexual. Ha ha. It's an offensive joke. I guess an edgy joke. Offensive to some. David Weigel retweeted it. 
Well, is David Weigel a manager? Does he work over anybody? Did he say this to anybody in the newsroom? Then I don't see what the issue is. Perhaps it's an issue of the PR for the company and they don't want their high profile. And Dave Weigel's got a ton of followers. I mean, you know, I, I can understand where they're like, come on, man. You know, we're not trying to engage. In this guy's 600,000 followers. Fantastic work. Here we go. Jose A. Del Real says, Felicia, we all mess up from time to time. Engaging in repeated and targeted public harassment of a colleague is neither a good look, nor, nor is it particularly effective. It turns the language of inclusivity into clout chasing and bullying. I don't think this is appropriate. Fighting sexism and misogyny matters deeply to me. I will always admire your bravery in sharing your story, and I support your fight against retribution for doing so. Entirely separately, I hope you reconsider the cruelty you regularly unleash against colleagues. To which she says, when women stand up for themselves, some people respond with even more vitriol. Last night, a post colleague publicly attacked me for calling him, attacked you for calling on another colleague's sexist tweet. All right. I'm sorry. Maybe it's a bit esoteric to all of you watching the, the establishment media just blow up on itself from hiring these kinds of people. But boy, do you love to see it. Listen, Felicia, you need to learn to do your job and understand that in this world, people say naughty things. We are not going to hold your hand as you cry about the fact that someone posted a mean joke on the Internet. That's what the Internet is. Don't bring it to work. But I'll tell you, Twitter certainly has made corporate office in, in, in politics wacky. It really is amazing to watch the Washington Post just blow up. OK, you know, look, man, I run a company. We, we have we have issues. We have complaints. Everybody's trying to get along. We're trying to figure things out. You know what I would say to somebody who came to me with a complaint that happened not at work? I'd be like, I don't know what you want me to do. It didn't happen here. If an employee went to another employee, uh, let's, let's put it this way. If, uh, uh, if I had a journalist who was in a room full of people and they were all drinking by the water cooler and one person said, let me tell you a joke. You know, hey, here's one. Every woman is bi. He's got to figure it out if it's polar or sexual. <laughs> and then they all high fived. I'd be like, OK, that is tough. Let's be real. Some people don't want to work in that environment where they're made to feel uncomfortable or the boat of jokes. I'd probably say your, your complaint is duly noted. I don't see this as a, a major issue. I would say to the employer, re, employee, rest assured, you know, we're going to ask people to try and tone it down. But that's about it. I, I, I don't know that we can do anything other than take note of it. And I'll tell the employees, keep in mind, some people might not want to hear that stuff. There is a real challenge you need to understand. You can't, in the, in the modern era, just ignore workplace complaints like this. This is thanks to civil rights law. And I mean that. I mean that. So what that means is if someone feels like they're being discriminated against because of the environment, you, the employer can get in trouble. The dominoes will keep falling over until everyone is wearing a gray jumpsuit. For me, I'm kind of like, listen, here's what we tell employees. You're in an environment where we are developing culture. This means there's going to be edgy comedy. Things like Dave Chappelle, Ricky Gervais, Ryan Long. The, the, these videos will be played. You will hear these things and we will read these jokes. If you have an issue with that, there's nothing we can do to make you feel more comfortable. Dave Chappelle, Ricky Gervais, offensive comedy is a major component in the cultural content we produce. That's all I can say. Now, if someone is actually harassing, we'll tell them like, hey, you know, just just try and keep people's, you know, feelings in, 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 in mind when you tell these jokes. Not that you can all the time. The, the reality is I want people to get along. But I think at the end, these people like you can't live this way. If we're going to be producing videos on this stuff and we're going to be reporting on this stuff and people are going to tell these jokes, nothing you can do about it. But here's here's the ultimate point. This didn't even happen at work. It's a guy. He retweeted something. I got to be honest, if it if it if it were me and there was a non workplace incident and the employee went to this degree, I would probably reprimand them for harassing the employee. I'd be like, listen, employee told a joke, not at work. You are now Im harassing the employee outright, creating a tense work environment. What do you expect is going to happen? As for Taylor Renz, oh, man, she'd be fired so fast. I, I, don't, I can't imagine why they hire her. I know, I know. They hire her because she generates controversy. And then we talk about the Washington Post. But hey, 
Let me tell you something, my friends. I just went to an, I went antiquing this weekend. That's right. I love going antiquing. It's, it's really great. I got a bunch of newspapers. I got, I got a Clinton impeachment Washington Post, mint condition, wrapped in plastic. That is cool. And it's like Senate divided on impeachment or whatever. And it's got a picture of Bill Clinton. And I'm like, yo, 19, was it 96 or something like that? The once great and prestigious Washington Post, now a rage bait blog for feminists to complain about the radicalization of the internet and people saying mean jokes. Jeff Bezos, everything $250 million could buy and more. Oh, you hate to see it, don't you? No, you love to see it. The Washington Post is imploding. We are speaking out. We are the media now. We are taking over. And I just can't wait till these people are just washed away into cultural irrelevance because that's what they are. You know what this is? These are people who only have followers because they are propped up. That's it. They are propped up by institutional platforms. And the moment these platforms can't make it work and they can't now, the moment you let this go on, it'll be gone. These people will no longer be able to push their anti-meritocratic ideas on the world. Ideas that no one wants to hear and no one agrees with. Hey, so there you go. Enjoy it while it lasts. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.